Ladies, what intrigues you the most about men, can be NSFW or normal. For more infotainment, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thanks for watching. I love man hugs. It feels so nice being squished into their chest and having their arms around me. It feels good for us too. When I hug my girlfriend and squeeze her into my chest, and feel her sort of settle in, it's just, amazing. It's so strange how something as simple as a hug with someone you love can feel so relaxing, exciting, rejuvenating, and satisfying at the same time. Sometimes I even have to pull her back when I need just another few seconds and she does the same when she needs it. Also, we love hugs too. A lot of us are particularly touch-starved, and respond really well to hugs. God, this. All this. My love languages are physical touch and quality time, I'm quite literally starved of all positive emotion like 99% of the time. Can someone just get over here, kiss me on my stupid little forehead? and hold me for like 15 minutes already so I can go back to being a happy little dude again. When I married my husband, he told me that when he got his wedding band, the men's section was barely a corner at the jeweler. I began to notice it more in most department stores I go to. Granted, some have more of a selection, but it's like men are expected to be okay with the more limited fashion choices. I feel bad for my husband if he ever wanted to experiment. I genuinely wish I could have a cool, unique band with meaning to me than way my wife does. You absolutely can, and shouldn't be ashamed of it. However it's gonna cost a pretty penny too. Oh and make sure you know to take it off when necessary and not to lose it. Had friend who had a cool one. Was a wooden band, with universal gears meshed together in a polished clear epoxy as a stone. Lost it at the beach because he was worried the salt water would ruin it. Good news was that since the materials were so cheap it was only like $500 or so. How chill they can be in certain situations while in my case I feel like I'm always overthinking and my brain keeps buzzing all the time. Also how easily some can just subject themselves to life-threatening situations just for a gag or to have fun, like how. Is that an adrenaline thing? Do the basic survival instincts shut down because of boredom? Are you talking about all of those why women live longer than men videos? Because I totally agree. Girls doing stupid together is texting a crush whereas guys will be like do you reckon I could chase and catch that pigeon or something? Guys do more dumb and it is funnier. There are a lot of well documented biological distinctions between men and women, many of them proposed to come from hunter gatherer divides. I'll preface this by saying that a lot of what follows is generalization, with individuals potentially having behaviors which could fall anywhere on the spectrum, regardless of gender, and not meant to imply that one has better responses than another, just responses which evolve to deal with different problems. Men tend to have much greater muscle mass and develop muscle with much less effort, thank you testosterone, have greater visual acuity for movement and spatial awareness and a sense of hearing slightly more attuned to background noises. Men also have less impactful emotional responses, or at least less immediately impactful emotional responses, because when there are emotional issues on the hunt, they need to be suppressed at least until the hunt is finished. All useful hunting traits. By contrast, women generally have better color vision, better taste and smell sensitivity, and much better speech recognition. These are much more useful traits while gathering, given the need to determine whether food is ripe or rotten, and the lack of need for silence and nonverbal communication. Women also have greater emotional responses, because immediate empathetic responses are important for eliciting the behaviors needed for maintaining social stability and coenzyme. Exactly how much of this is innate or due to cultural pressures is unclear, and for half of this I could very well be talking out of my men. Due to cultural expectations around masculine behavior, a greater exposure to violent behavior through sports and media, and due to existing in a culture where the threat posed by the opposite is far smaller than the inverse case, don't have the same set of fears that women do. Most men don't fear walking the streets at night, because they're confident in their ability to manage an attack, and have been cultured to believe that an attack is unlikely. 
On top of that, we can theorize that men have a brain which is hardwired to reduce emotional response under severe stress, because the kinds of stresses we were under tended to be immediate and required clear thought sharp and often violent responses. By contrast, women tended to have social stresses, and thus an emotional stress response is advantageous, in that it a, pushes one to provide more support for others and b, elicits more support from others when in trauma. The end result of this is that men have responses to stress which are more effective in the short term, but which aren't well suited to managing long-term or emotional stresses. By contrast, women's average stress response is less well suited to immediate stresses, but much better for coping with long-term emotional, and particularly social, stresses. Men doing risky behaviors comes out of a few things. Firstly, masculine expectations around athleticism and feats of might push young men to take greater risks. Secondly, men's greater innate athleticism means that they have understandably greater confidence in their bodies to perform, and this can lead to overconfidence. Put these two factors together, and apply them to a brain which doesn't develop full capacity to gauge risk until the age of 25 or so, and you get the characteristic adolescent and young adult male recklessness. There's also the fact that men are biologically expendable. The real reason that men did the hunting in the first place, and thus we saw these physiological differences evolve at all, is because men aren't explicitly needed for child rearing. Which isn't to say we can't or shouldn't be doing an equal share of parenting, or our worse parents. If five men from a tribe went out hunting and died, it was pretty bad, but the tribe and their children could survive if the other men picked up the slack. It was a tragedy, but not unsurmountable. If five women from a tribe suddenly died, that tribe was. With this in mind, women had a strong selection pressure to avoid risky behaviors, because the gains associated with risks in social-slash-gathering environments were small and the losses severe, while men had selection pressures to engage in risky behaviors, higher rewards from success, and less severe losses for the species as a whole on a failure. With this in mind, it seems reasonable to assume that men could have an innate tendency to accept greater degrees of risk. You can pee, without sitting. Burn the wizards. I still think girls could do this, just have a leg either side of the bowl? I don't know. There's a scene in the TV series Utopia where one of the female characters does this while deadpan holding a gun at someone and it's my favorite opening scene I ever have seen. Amazon Prime show not the UK version which is a couple years old. Made me want to try practice my aim. It intrigues me how men are built. They're just so different from women. So much larger, whiter, hairier, and overall, rougher. I'm sometimes just mesmerized by looking at my boyfriend and observe. Compare him to my body and am just in awe. How guys move, how they handle things how they act with their significant other. Oh my, how soft and loving they get is so adorable, I can't get enough seeing that. Men's build is just so pretty to me. I know not every guy is built like Adonis or something. But that is even more interesting to me. Believe me, the same applies to some of us. I also do this with my girlfriend. Sometimes, I just keep watching how she moves. I'd say the don't give a about important stuff part is mostly just due to social conditioning. I live in the Midwest, so I can't speak on other parts of the country, but men here are still expected to be a man. I have pretty constant anxiety about important things but I never say any of it out loud because complaining or worrying is perceived as soft. Especially in front of my significant other or a woman in general. Most guys have a close friend, brother, or dad that they confide their troubles in, but that's about it. For the record, I hate this cultural expectation for men. I've had friends kill themselves who I never heard complain once. I spent most of my 20s spiraling with anxiety and depression, the girls I dated in that era would probably tell you I didn't give a about anything, but would have no idea that I was having almost constant panic attacks and not eating or sleeping for days at a time. Even now, knowing that all of the keep your troubles bottled up culture for men is detrimental to mental health, 
I still find myself replying with nothing more than I had a rough day or I'm hoping this gets better when my girlfriend asks if something is wrong. Culture is shifting, but definitely not fast enough.